All right, good morning everyone. So it's been a few weeks since I posted any content. I've obviously been away at work over in Qatar for the last five weeks and just got back a few days ago. And uh, today we're going to take a look again at the Lunt uh, Solar Scope. So this is actually the Lunt LS80MT, which is the modular scope, uh, which I showed uh, in a previous video assembling this for night use. So this is in its uh, current night configuration with the ZWOEF, which we easily fitted due to there being sufficient holes on the, the Crayford focuser just to get a straight mount, and also the 3D printed uh, handle adapter I made for the, the mini scope uh, up on top. And then obviously it's got the ZWO533 camera on it, uh, the colour, uh, Starfield 0.8 reducer, and then I've also put a, a manual uh, camera rotator uh, adapter in there as well. So as I say, this is it configured for night use. And one of the things I wanted to do with the day use, so for solar use, was also look at installing the EAF module onto the focuser for the uh, solar module. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, unfortunately, the solar module does not have any uh, suitable mounting holes for straightforward attaching the EAF so I had to come up with uh, an alternative method and again as you can see behind me I resorted to uh, cracking open the, the 3D printer again. So let's head over to the screen and uh, take a look at what we've come up with for that. Okay so here we are uh, on the desktop and I'm in Tinkercad into my account and here is the mounting adapter that I have made for an EAF to go onto the solar module of the Lunt LS80. Now as you can see here um, it shows two uh, copies and the reason for that is so that when I slice uh, down through the centre uh, of the inner ring and I do that for the two copies it gives me the, the two halves uh, which I can then clamp together. So what I built into the model is this plate uh, along the back with the uh, various positional uh, mounting holes. Now in the version 1 of the print that I've done, uh, I made them slightly too small, so they're actually 3mm and I ran a drill through them to 3.5mm and uh, I know I can get away with that with the way I designed all the, the layers and the wall thicknesses within the model uh, when I sliced it, so there was no issues there. And then the other thing I wanted to do uh, was use standard uh, quarter nut uh, through the clamp plate. Unfortunately, I made the inner hole slightly too small as well, so it didn't take a hold cleanly. And I resorted to using a M5 uh, nut and bolt uh, that we'll see in a second just to clamp it all together. Now, one of the other factors that I needed to think about was the shrinkage in the plastic. Yeah, once it cools down because it was printed around about 200 degrees C and one thing I did notice was there was a, probably about a 2 millimeter clearance all the way around uh, when the ring was attached to the uh, focus module but that was easily uh, taken care of with using some insulating foam uh, you know the stick on foams for around doors etc uh, and that also just gives you a nice interface uh, so you don't scratch the uh, steel on the telescope and takes up a nice grip onto the um, onto the telescope there with the clamp so we'll see that in a second so that's what the the model looks like and once it's all uh, all the objects have been combined uh, we can get the final clamp assembly which we can see here with the two halves and then we can export either or both uh, to print out onto the printer so that was the model and uh, I will put a link down to this uh, in the description if anybody else wants to uh, take a copy of it and modify it for their own scope or if you've got a similar telescope you can churn one of these out if you've got a printer and uh, do a conversion for your own setup. Alright so what does it look like? So here it is. This is the solar module and you can see we've got the uh, pressure tuner uh, down at the bottom here and then the focuser uh, on the top and here is the 3D printed 
uh, clamp assembly uh, in green. Now, unfortunately, I did plan to print it in this red uh, to match the uh, the colour of the lunt. However, the 3D Predator uh, that I was using uh, that had this uh, filament uh, already in place uh, didn't have any good uh, bed adhesion and I was struggling to get the print to initiate so uh, I think there's a little bit of moisture in the, in the bed plate as well as probably needing a good clean so uh, I bought that for just doing the first print and I had uh, this green uh, already installed on my other printer uh, the Anycubic Mega S so I thought well I'll just try printing that off because it was getting late and I didn't want to mess around trying to uh, sort out the Predator. So anyway, here she is mounted onto the Lunt solar module. And as you can see, the insulating foam uh, just in uh, around uh, the circumference just to act as the uh, cushion and clamp uh, to give it a good uh, firm grip onto the ring. And then at the bottom, we can see we've got the EAF uh, focus plate, focus motor plate uh, into those holes uh, that I ran the 3.5mm drill through just to open them up slightly. Uh, and then these are the, the actual uh, hex, key, uh, hex screws that come with the focus wheel. And at the side here, here we've got the two uh, M5 uh, machined uh, bolts, uh, screws and uh, the, uh, the nut at the end and that is pretty much all I needed to do. Uh, obviously I had to remove uh, the, uh, the focus knob off of the side of the Crayford focuser uh, but I left the, the fine tune uh, at the other side, not that it will be used but I just didn't want to mess around with that side it was easier just to unscrew this one single um, knob off the, that side of the uh, focus, Crayford focuser. And I just wrote Lunt on the inside of it, so when it's in with my bag of bolts, I know what it's come off of. Alright, so here you can also see on the screen, I'm currently connected to Nina. So I just went onto the focuser, uh, connected to the ZWAF uh, focus driver and then clicking on the cog icon brings up the ZWO uh, driver uh, for the EAF. So one thing I did first was I made sure that I'd driven the focuser all the way down to its fully in position and then I used the set zero uh, on the screen uh, to set that position to the zero position and then I also noticed that the in and out was working back to front. Uh, so when I was driving it in, it was actually coming out. So I just click the reverse uh, checkbox and we're all good now. So now uh, if we watch the, uh, the focus wheel and the top of the focuser, you'll see when I go and set a position, so say 5000 and click move, we can see it starts to drive out you can see the focus is going round uh, this year you can see the little uh, screw holes coming round and also we're starting to see the indicator plate coming up on the front now the travel movement is around about 18,000 units uh, on the ZWO and uh, that gives you the full I think it's around about 40 millimeter travel on the focuser so plenty of room for fine tuning your focus. So that's it, job done. And now it's just a case of I need to get this uh, onto the solar scope body, the main body of the OTA. And uh, once the cloud clears, unfortunately the clouds have rolled in last night, uh, we'll get back to doing some solar and seeing what's going on with all these sunspots that everybody's been watching over the last uh, few weeks. All right. So that's me. I don't think there's anything else to say at the moment. Uh, if I was to print another one, I probably will put a little bit of support material just between this 90 degree edge here. Although everything is pretty rigid and there's no real twist or weights, anything sitting on there, it should probably be fine. And uh, 
I'll probably open up the hole slightly on the second version so I can use the original set screws uh, that I wanted to. And that's it. All right. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one, whenever that may be. Clear skies, everyone.